Hello, students. Welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're going to do an example for the centroid of area. Now, this example is a little different from previous ones we've done before, because in this example, we're dealing with a centroid of a complex area. Now, let's look at the area that we're given in this example. And this example is example 910, coming from Hibbler's statics book. So looking at the area that we're given, it is a complex area that really can't be expressed by a single equation, right? This kind of problem is what we call a composite body problem. We call it a composite body problem because what we want to do is separate and break up this complex structure into a series of simple structures, whether it is uh, some rectangles, a square, a triangle, and so on, simple structures that we can easily find the centroid for. And once we've broken it down into these simple structures with easy to find locations, we then have to sum back together those uh, relative centroids to find the true center of the whole structure, right? Okay, so now that we got that in mind, our goal, we want to find the centroid of this entire area, a summed up, x bar and y bar. Let's start with creating a free body diagram. In this diagram, what we simply are going to do is create those individual areas of interest. Area one is going to be the triangle. Area two is going to be a rectangle. And area three is going to be this square. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a table of elements. And this is where we express what is the amount of area for each segment or for each thing that we've broken up. What is its X and Y centroid, which we'll call X tilde and Y tilde. And then also an expression for X tilde times A and Y tilde times A. All right? So we want to find these things for the triangle, for the rectangle, and for the square. And that's pretty straightforward. For the triangle, the area is one half the base times the height. Uh, its x position from point O is one, and its y position is one. And then uh, x tilde times a and y tilde times a, pretty straightforward to find, right? Okay. For the second structure, the rectangle, we can find the area as simply the uh, base times the height, so 2 times 3, which gets a 6. Its x position is at negative 1, and its y position is at negative, I mean, is at uh, 1.5, positive 1.5, right? We take those and multiply, we get those next set of terms. And then our last one here is the square, element 3. The square is one by one. Its x position is at negative 2.5. Its y position is at 0.5. And then those other two terms we can calculate straightforward. All right. So now that we have our table of elements filled, we now need to take this information and combine it to find the true centroid of the entire area, right? The, 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 the relative combined centroid, All right? Well, to do that, we have equations. In the book, the expression for finding x bar in a composite body is as follows, where x bar is equal to the sum of the x tildes times a divided by the sum of the, a uh, sum of the areas, right? So, those expressions that we found, and then the areas that we found, we can put those and apply those directly in for element one, two, and three, add those together, and we find that x tilde, or I mean x bar, is at negative 0.348 feet. All right. Now we'll repeat that process for y bar, for the centroid of the composite body. 
Well, that centroid is, is equal to the sum of y tilde times a, and we found all of these, over the sum of the areas. So for element one, element two, and element three, we add up their terms and find that y bar is at 1.22 feet. Putting that information together, the centroid of this composite area is at negative 0.348 and 1.22 feet, respectively. All right. Now, one thing we always want to do is we want to take these values that we found and put them back on our diagram to try to get a feel. Does it make sense? Is that really the centroid? Because we got an, there's intuition. Like we kind of know where the center should be for most structures. So let's see, at negative 0.3 and at 1.22, does that make sense? Well, that would be about right here. If we're going you know, negative 0.3 something and, and, and the, the, oh, I've got to turn the button off. If we're going to about uh, negative 0.3, in about 1.2, I mean, we should be our centroid of this, of this composite area should be about right here. And of course, there's a little exaggeration. I think a little bit of exaggeration here. I think it's about right there. But that, I think that makes sense to me. I think that's a reasonable position for the centroid of this, of this area. So we've solved this problem. Uh, I always love these types of problems because they're, it's almost like you're taking a, a, a Lego and you're breaking up into pieces and evaluating each piece and then putting it back together, right? So that's the end of this example. Uh, I'll see everybody in the next video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, hopefully you're still here with me. Um, we've got another series of videos that are going to be coming out shortly for the last chapter of statics. I'll see you soon.